what is up everybody it's your girl deja welcome to my channel if you are new here make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel and if you are returning welcome back welcome back to the channel today we're actually going to be doing um what am i doing today today we're going to be doing unpopular opinions so i've been working on this list and it, it keeps growing slowly but surely, but this, this part of the list is pretty short right now. But as I add things, I think I'll do more videos of unpopular opinions because um, I have them. Um, but yeah, pretty much we're just going to go ahead and hop right into this. But before we do, let's go ahead and roll that intro. <laughs> Alrighty, so for my first unpopular opinion, we have the fast fashion conversation. So for me, fast fashion, the co well, at least the conversation around it, is very um, economically uh, discriminatory. It's economic discrimination, essentially. Um, the reason why I say this is because, in general, we understand that fast fashion, the businesses that produce these products in mass amounts are dangerous for the environment, but seldom do I really see um, the other side of the argument as to why fast fashion is thriving and people exploring that more. Like it might be mentioned like, oh, well it's cheap, but it's like truly people don't really delve enough into why fast fashion is gonna be around for a long time. Um, I don't really think the argument is really um reliable and just saying like oh you're wrong for buying fast fashion when it's like you have people who you know they can barely live they want to be able to wear nice clothes because when you look nice you feel nice typically and they want to be able to wear trendy clothes typically and a lot of these fast fashion brands they produce um a lot of trendy clothing and, and people want to you know be up on trends keep up with the joneses as they say or the johnsons whoever the family is and um I just think it's a bit unfair sometimes, like, how the conversation really kind of neglects um, the the everyday person who is just trying to buy things that fit them and make them feel good. And, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not saying this as a, a way to say, like, that there there's a solution. I don't know what the solution really is. I think there's a lot of nuance in the argument, and I think... I guess my opinion is that a lot of people just don't highlight it. And so I don't really engage in the conversation. Like personally, I do shop at fast fashion brands and it's not something that I go and boast about. I would never do like a brand deal with them or go on a brand trip for anybody. But I think it is, um, I think it is, it's kind of like negligent in my opinion where people share these opinions but like they don't take in consideration some people can't afford a twenty dollar shirt like people can barely afford groceries yet alone like a twenty dollar shirt people have kids they have to shop for their kids themselves their partners you know buy things for their home and so it's like fast fashion brands make that possible now i will say i do agree with the argument that some things are not of quality so it's a matter of like buying things that you think are gonna last or that will last so like when i do shop uh on fast fashion websites um i typically like i i care about the reviews i care about how long somebody's been able to keep a product um and i will also make this argument that sometimes like people aren't able to keep clothes from quality stores as well because of like changes in weight gain or weight loss or like the product is more expensive but it doesn't mean it's actually sustainable and that they're going to keep the clothing for a long time so like I feel like it sucks when a lot of the responsibility is put on the consumer to like oh you can't shop there was like are you going to bu buy my clothes are you gonna buy my clothes Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's, like, that's one of my main opinions. Like, that one, I, I feel very passionate about it, but let me know how y'all feel in the comments. I know it's 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 a very difficult conversation to have, um, but to be fair, y'all, like, I'm not saying I don't care about the environment. I do. I really do care because I have a child, so I want him to live on a healthy planet. I think, too, though, like I said, there's nuance here. I feel like if we're going to put a lot of the responsibility on the consumer – then just as much energy needs to be put on the companies and not even just fast fashion companies, but other companies that contribute heavily, heavily to the like deterioration of the earth. So that's just how I feel about it. Let me know how y'all feel in the comments. Cause yeah, 
I'm tired of hearing people say it without really considering like why it considers like continues to thrive and i'm not talking about those influencers. i want to be clear i'm not talking about those influencers who are doing like 700 hundred dollar hauls every month and like not wearing the clothes but one time like that's not who i'm talking about i'm talking about the people who like really depend on these companies with affordable clothing so that they can put like have clothes on their back so they can have you know more than one pair of jeans and stuff like that like those are the people i'm talking about and i don't really think the argument considers them a lot so if you're dragging the influencers who are going on Shein brand trips and stuff, that's y'all's business. But, like, for the everyday person, leave them alone. All right, so number two. So this one is going to be another tricky one, but I feel how I feel and I said what I said. Y'all have to stop using y'all's mental illness as an excuse for your actions, and you need to self- stop self-diagnosing yourself. Like, so many people be like, oh, I have this, I have that, and – It's not that we need you, like, we don't need a copy of your diagnosis slip. That's not what I'm saying. But, like, you don't know that you have that. You have never been, like, treated or assessed for it. So, like, just going and, first off, claiming that over your life is so dangerous. Like, I believe in manifestation. I believe in the power of the tongue. So I wouldn't just go around, like, even if I might feel anxious some days, I wouldn't just go around saying I have anxiety if I've never been diagnosed with anxiety because, power of the tongue you'll manifest anxiety in your life but I think also at the same time like more to my point is like people really have like very terrible behavior and they'll blame it oh it was my depression that made me cheat on you 20 times or it was my anxiety that made me ghost you or it was this and that and it's not saying that those aren't valid behaviors associated with um like those mental illnesses and, and things of that nature but it's just like yo at some point, we have to take responsibility for the things we do and how we treat people. Because hurt people hurt people. But it's like, if you don't know why you really hurt hurting people, you should probably go figure that out before you just go and blame it on something else. And I think it also invalidates a lot of people who are actually suffering from these things because people make those associations like, oh, I dated this guy who had, let's say, BPD, for example. I believe that's the correct term. Um Yeah, BPD, I think that's the term that you use. Now, I apologize if I'm wrong. You can correct me kindly in the comments. But, um, like, say a girl dates a guy with BPD, and she has, you know, terrible experience. Or let, let me be clear. She dates a guy who claims he has BPD, and she has terrible experiences, very toxic, traumatic relationship. And now she associates every person with BPD with being that type of person. Like, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous to move like that and blame a lot of your actions on um, your mental illnesses or shortcomings. Like, I think we need to start having a more serious conversation about it because I wouldn't say there's, like, a glorification of it, but it kind of gives a lot of excuses because a lot of people struggle with these things, and they aren't necessarily terrible people or they don't necessarily display terrible behavior intentionally like people make mistakes but like going and cheating on somebody or putting your hands on somebody or just in general like displaying poor behavior and hurting people and whether it's physically mentally emotionally like not everybody who suffers from certain ailments does that so yeah it it does really bother me it bothers me so much and I've had so many girlfriends date guys who are like doing terrible like just not really showing up for them in the relationship and they're just making excuses like oh it's his depression I'm like girl we all go like whether you diagnose or not a lot of people go through like seasonal phases of depression that doesn't excuse like treating somebody poorly I'm just I I need y'all to make it make sense I need y'all to make it make sense. And then also, on another note of that, y'all need to stop diagnosing people. I hate when I see, like, especially on social media or, like, when people are having conversations about somebody, oh, that person's a narcissist, oh, that person's this and that. Stop speaking stuff over people. Death and life, bro, and the power of the tongue. Like, y'all got to stop speaking stuff over people. It's dangerous. All right, so number three. So... I don't think this is really an unpopular opinion, but I just need to say it. I need to just get it off my chest. Y'all really have the memory of a fish when it comes to cancel culture. Like, especially this particular summer, like with everything going on with Colleen Ballinger, things resurfacing with James Charles, Jeffree Star coming out of his cave, Shane Dawson still continuing to be weird and 
um, I think it was Adam McIntyre who recently like reacted to one of Shane Dawson's short films. And I mean, in his general community of supporters, like everybody was very disgusted, but a lot of people were just like, I can't believe like I used to find this entertaining when I was younger. And I'm like, I don't care how young you were. I was the same age as these people, and I never found that type. I know so many people who never found these people entertaining. Like, I don't think I really thought Shane Dawson was interesting until I found his conspiracy theory videos, which I still stand by. Like, some of them are stretched, but they, they are entertaining. Like, they do really well on YouTube. And then Jeffree Star, right before everything happened with Dramageddon 1 through 3. But, um... Yeah, like, cancel culture is so crazy. Like, the fact that Jeffree Star was able to completely rebrand himself on TikTok is insane to me. The fact that Colleen Ballinger is probably not going to apologize and be able to completely rebrand herself in some way if she does continue to pursue, like, a social media influencer career, like, that's possible for her. Or and even though, even then, like, she could go into, like, other fields of entertainment because she has a theater background. So it's like she could like take a year off and completely rebrand herself because y'all be forgetting y'all be forgetting and then the next generation who's coming up on the internet or coming up in like media entertainment they don't know about it because people stop talking about it because y'all forget about it so at this end of the day I really don't think people can actually be canceled I think they can be held accountable they can have certain things taken from them and some can be deplatformed but in the most part like nobody's really canceled nobody's really canceled for real like I just really don't I just don't think it's real um and so when people are like oh yeah they're canceled and I'm like where where like where are they canceled because they could go somewhere else and, and get that same level of success like y'all be really um y'all be really be tripping me out with that in the comments and like just in social media in general but again I want to know what y'all think like do y'all think that cancel culture is is real and if it is or if it is it real or isn't is it or isn't it real right and then explain like why you feel like it's not like if you don't think cancel culture is real what do you think like needs to be happening on a regular basis like are there parameters that should be in place um a good example is like uh peter mon he was talking about how a lot of people say like an unfollow of somebody goes a long way versus and i say this in reference to like um manny mua and daniel prada and joey graceffa all of them still following colleen ballinger or colleen ball however you say her name whatever who cares ukulele bitch and um who um Raw Beauty Christie still following James Charles and like all of these people still following problematic individuals. Um, like what? Well, what Peter Mon was saying was that a lot of people tell him like, "Oh, well, if they just unfollowed them, that would let me know that they don't support them anymore." Which I'm like, yeah. Social media also isn't real. Just because they unfollowed them doesn't mean that behind the scenes they're not supporting them. Like, for me, I need a complete, like, denouncing of this person. And it still doesn't say that they won't still be friends with them. But I couldn't imagine if I was going through a cancellation, like, somebody that I considered a friend going on the internet in front of millions of people being like, yeah, they're a deplorable person, blah, 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 blah. Like, I couldn't imagine we'd still be talking outside of that. But maybe that's just me. But, yeah, I want to know, like, in the comments what y'all think would, like, make cancel culture actually work. And I think a lot of it is on us as the viewers and as the consumers of the content and products and whatever else they're producing. Like, I think a lot of it is on us. Because even when we hate watch, that's still, like, keeping them on a platform. So, I don't know. It's tough. But, yeah. Okay. So, number, what is this? Four. Number four, Colleen Ballinger is not going to apologize. She's not going to apologize, y'all. Like, I d like, I literally, and we'll mark it today. What's today? October 4th. I'm telling you at 12.02 p.m. This video will probably go up later today or tomorrow or whatever. But October 4th, 12.02 p um, p.m., I don't think that Colleen Ballinger is going to apologize. I don't, and I don't, I don't think it's that she doesn't care, but... I think she wants to try to come back because I feel like let's take, for example, Jenna Marbles. Jenna Marbles removed herself. She deplatformed herself and removed herself from the Internet. And as far as the entertainer capacity, 
off of her own fruition. She felt like she needed to hold herself accountable. She felt like nobody was going to Jenna Marbles and saying, like, oh, you need to say this, this, and this because of this, this, and this that we found. Like, there were no, like, snark reddits dragging her. Well, I can't say they weren't snark reddits, but her her reason for coming out was off of her own fruition, right? And then she left, right? She deplatformed herself. Let's even take Cody Rants, for example. Like, she did what she thought she was going to do. She thought she ate, and then she didn't. And so then she had to deplatform herself. I heard she did come back, though. I kind of heard she came back. Mm. Did she come back? Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, because Colleen hasn't come out, that lets me know that she doesn't want to be removed from the Internet. She wants to maintain her career on the internet which lets me know like i just previously said about cancel culture she's gonna wait it out rebrand figure something out and she'll be back she'll be back i'm telling y'all i don't think she's gonna apologize and i i absolutely 100 percent think she should um it's not any of our apologies to accept it's the victims uh, apologies adam ollie alex um becky um, I, I apologize if I'm missing anybody. You can put it in the comments if I missed anybody. But um, it's it, Trisha Paytas. Like, it's their apology to accept, which she did apologize to Trisha Paytas. So, but she did it behind the scenes via email. I'm like, did she not got this girl number? It's like, okay, she blocked you from your phone number. Text her on somebody else's phone. Like, I just, mm, mm, I don't think she apologizing, y'all. I really don't. I, I I have no faith in the fact that she's going to apologize. And, you know, I'm sorry to the people that she's hurt and harmed and disappointed. I mean, I've never been a Colleen Ballinger fan, but I just, y'all don't see it. I don't see it, but we'll see. We ain't going to see nothing. Um, And this kind of goes into my next unpopular opinion. This is number five. Them celebrities don't care about you. Them celebrities do not care about you. Like, and when I say this, I mean in the sense that I think I was, I'm going to just argue that most celebrities appreciate their fans. They appreciate what their supporters and their fans and their stands and people who really, like, have given them the success that they have. I think they appreciate that. But they don't care about you. They don't love you, like, in the way y'all might love them. Like, this ain't no type, like, this is like a swarm situation. Like, the love y'all have for them is way stronger than the love they'll have for you. Like, you can appreciate somebody, you can be grateful for somebody, but that don't mean you love them. And the way y'all be going hard for these celebrities, you would, you would think, you would think that you have, like, some type of personal relationship. I mean, like, let's take Adam McIntyre, for example. He was sitting there being a whole adult. He was a, a minor. He was being an entire adult therapist, divorce and relationship and life therapist, and she still did him dirty. Them, ce them celebrities don't care about you. Them celebrities, um, like, they really don't care about you. And I think once we start accepting that they don't, we will stop putting them on a certain pedestal. And I think just starting out, separate the art or the content from the art artist and content creator. Because when y'all build the connections together and you get so infatuated, which I, it, it's a double-edged sword, you know, like I understand that when you really appreciate um, what somebody is bringing to a certain field like music or film or whatever, like you do kind of get infatuated with who they are outside of that. But nonetheless, like they don't care y'all. They don't care. And I'm praying for y'all who be, you know, waking up early in the morning, starting your day concerned about what they're doing. Like if I see it, I see it. But like the fandoms and all of this stuff. And, th and I think that's the strangest thing about the Colleen Ballinger thing is, like, growing up, I never, because I was around for that era, I was never, like, in a fandom. I think even now I'm not in a fandom. Like, I love Beyonce, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm part of the Beehive. First off, I couldn't afford them tickets, you know? I couldn't afford them tickets. I'm a single mom afford them tickets if, even if I wanted to I couldn't afford them tickets and I did want to go because it, it really gave the whole tour gave like I was getting on the internet on Instagram every day and I was pissed because I'm like where is my silver suit where is my silver suit like I was however I wouldn't identify myself as a part of 
a Beyonce fandom or the Beehive or whatever you want to call it. Like, I think, I think a lot of times, like, artists and creators give you an opportunity to escape a reality, but y'all got to come back sometimes. Y'all got to come back to reality. You got to get out of the sky and come back down to earth sometimes. So, y'all be scaring me a little bit. I ain't going to lie. So, that's why I just need to let y'all know them celebrities don't care about you. Um, so number, so number six is every store should have Apple Pay or Google Pay if you got like an Android phone and they need to start adding our driver's license to our like digital wallets. Like the fact that Walmart still doesn't have Apple Pay, at least in Virginia, Walmart still don't got Apple Pay is jarring. It's jarring. Like most places I go to now have Apple Pay. Even like food trucks, we have an Apple Pay. So like, why why doesn't Walmart have Apple Pay? It doesn't make sense to me. But this is also why I don't support that blue company. You know what I'm saying? We we already know we keep it red over here. We love Target. That's what we do. We love Target. I don't I don't support Walmart at all. I said what I said. Like y'all can talk about the prices all day. I'll pay the extra money for a quality shopping experience and to actually get assistance when I need help at Target. So yeah, um the fact that there are still major stores who do not take Apple Pay. Like I can use Apple Pay at the window of most fast food restaurants. But like I really have a qualm with this. Like I anyway, and then, like I said, the driver's license thing, I think we're coming to a point where as scary as the digital age is becoming and as fast as it's growing and, and I think in a lot of ways excelling beyond um, our understanding as humans um, in, in, a, in a few ways, I think that s- in some ways it's best to embrace it than combat it. Um, I don't feel like this about AI. AI scares me. I'm not going to lie. AI terrifies the hell out of me, and I think that's on my list. But um, as far as putting my driver's license on my Apple, um, on my, like, digital wallet, I think that's so convenient. Like, it's not saying that you don't still carry your driver's license or you don't still carry your cards with you, but, like, having that, that option is so nice because if you do leave your cards at home, it's like you can still get in the club. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just – it should be happening. It should be happening. And now since we're talking about technology, let's go on to what, number six? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, number seven. So number seven, AI. Y'all, this AI got y'all in a chokehold. I knew we were a lost cause when people started doing AIs of what their babies would look like. I was like, y'all, this is weird. This is weird. Like the little AI pictures, because even my little profile, like my my profile image is an AI picture. I think like some of the more like creative RC ones are really cool, even though like arguably it takes away from like artists who can do that. Um, it is still kind of cool to see like what technology has done. And I think that's where my curiosity came from it. But like when people started doing AIs of their face on like different bodies and AIs of like but they're like, like it's not even just doing it for like fun for like you know S and Gs, but like posting the pictures like they're you is crazy. Like, okay, go off, <laughs> like, go off. That's scary. And then posting the pictures of the baby. Like, I seen this one thing on Facebook where this girl had posted like her little AI baby, and. You know how people have like Instagrams for their kids and their dogs, but they speak in like the per- like the the point of view of the baby or the pet. Like she did that, but with an AI picture. She don't got no real kids. It's just too much. It's too much. It's too much, and I will not be supporting this um just insane behavior. And it's it's gonna only go down from here. No telling what other AIs they're gonna be doing, and people are just gonna be living virtual lives where they depend on these types of things and and, and not really looking around in the, the space they're they're physically in so yeah you just wait it's, it's definitely a black mirror episode that we're living in and it's a very long one it's a very long one i'm waiting for it to end or something to blow up i at this point i can't do it no more okay so number eight argue with your mama on this one rounding up at the register is a scam I never round up at the register. I've I've heard so many people be like, oh, my God, I feel so bad when I don't give them my 60 cent. I do not. I do not. I don't feel bad at all because this is my thinking. 
are you gonna write my name on the little donation list of whatever organization it is that you donate to like am i gonna get some type of ta- like i can't use it as a tax credit tax write-off but you know who can the company that you gave your roundup to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now to be fair like a goodwill or whatever i feel like mm, that's in good spirit right goodwill they be employing people and stuff like that like they do a lot for the community but it's like i'm not gonna give my roundup to walmart and i have a qualm with walmart like at the end of the day i have a qualm with walmart like it is what it is but yeah i'm mm-mm, roundup is a scam mm, will not be doing it will not be doing it will not be doing it um what's next oh my professor emailed me this is last but not least last but not, oh you know what yeah this is last but not least the comment section is getting ridiculous y'all now make sure you like comment and subscribe but when i go onto certain posts and I'm just watching the post and it might make me laugh or react or whatever. And then I see like a comment where somebody completely like the one or two people out of 500 who completely misinterpreted the situation. And it's just kind of like, who hurt you today? Who hurt you today? Like sometimes you don't have to comment like and it's not saying that we can't have discourse around certain things. But it's like, OK, for example, the lady who and I'm gonna see if I can find the video and I'll put it on the screen or I'll, I'll I'll add it in but nonetheless this lady posted like a TikTok or a reel or whatever she's pregnant or whatever and so she like made in the caption she was like when everybody's like hoping finally for a boy because I guess she got a bunch of girls she's like when everybody's hoping for a boy and I'm just praying for a healthy baby grown adults mothers made decision made a decision to get in her comments and say mother of an unhealthy child here all children deserve love she never said that they didn't she never said that they didn't and she was like sending all the love and then somebody responded to that and was like i don't know what you mean by sending all the love after you just told her told her like something along the lines like you told her that her child isn't worth being loved or something like that and it's like we can't pray for healthy babies kev on stage said this we cannot pray for healthy babies because the comment section is ridiculous we cannot even exist like people want to exist on the internet but we can't exist on the internet because the comment section tells you how to exist on the internet it's ridiculous and uh, you know who i blame i blame vine i blame vine that's when people got real loud because back before Vine, we had Twitter and stuff, but you knew them people for the most part. You were part of maybe a common community, you know, or like Facebook was your family. MySpace was like your friends and other people that you found like creative that you were cool with. But like you communicated with each other. It wasn't just randos with opinions under your posts because you have the, you know, the bravery to have a public page or account it wasn't just random people under your post telling you how you're living your life wrong it is so jarring it is so jarring like I literally I think that's part of the reason why I'd be so scared to post on the internet now because I just don't want to hear nobody tell me how they disagree with what I'm doing when I'm minding my business especially when I'm not hurting nobody I'm not hurting myself I'm not hurting my child I ain't hurting nobody else like what is the problem why do y'all like what is in y'all soul that says I have to say something and they better listen I need to ruin this person's day like I just don't get it I don't get it but you know what nonetheless the comment section is ridiculous y'all are a lot of times ridiculous but I'm gonna be praying for y'all and just you know also leave a comment (laughs) all right but that was all of my unpopular opinions for now I am going to um make another list down the road i'll just keep making a little list and then once i get to another good um, good number of them we'll do another video but let me know what you thought of this uh particular video these unpopular opinions do you agree do you disagree um if not comment an emoji just for the sake of engagement you know like the video and make sure you also hit that bell so that you know when i have more videos coming out i have a lot of things that i've been planning i have a lot of things that i'm trying to do and just trying to navigate time personal life motherhood school and trying to get some stuff out to you um I recently had somebody in my discord saying like where's the podcast and I'm like not too much
<laughs> not too much we working on it we working on it so i do appreciate everybody who's watching today's video if you made it to the end i really really appreciate you and again make sure you subscribe engage with me and any other ideas that y'all have for videos that you think i would be good to react to um or or talk about um, make sure you comment that and also my other socials i think they're in the description box below if not i'll make sure i add them but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.